first principle is assessment should be valid. So what do we mean about the word valid? So the word valid comes from the French word validity, which means um, legally bent or having a force in law. And also from Latin word validus, which means um, strong, effective, active, and powerful. Moving on to the real idea of the first principle, which involves the validity of assessment. This ensures that assessment pass and associated criteria effectively measure student attainment of the intended learning outcomes at the appropriate level. So the validity describes an assessment successful function and result. It is the process of constructing and evaluating argument for and against the identified interpretation of the test scores and their relevance to the proposed use. So it is according to AER8, APA, or NCME 2014. Instructor can improve the validity of their cross classroom assessment both when using the assessment and when using evidence to refer scores back to the student. Validity evidence in assessment is evidence based on test content. Um, it is used to demonstrate that the content of the test such as items, tasks, question, wordings is related to the learning that it is was intended to measure. So for example, a classroom assessment should not have items or criteria that measure topics unrelated to the objective of the course. So in this, teacher can use table of specification for test, um, for test to ensure and communicate how the content of the course or unit is being measured. The second evidence and validity is evidence based on response processes. So it is used to demonstrate that assessment requires participants to engage in a specific behavior um, deemed necessary to complete a task. So um, instructor can gather evidence um, based on response processes by analyzing qualitative responses in order to identify how um, student arrive at answer or by asking student how the um, how the approach a specific question or problem so how they approach the specific question or problem um, the instructor give it give it to them the third um, validity evidence is evidence based on internal structure so it demonstrates how the relationship between scores on individual test items align with the construct um, that are being measured. So, instructor can gather evidence based on internal structure by um, conducting item level analysis so, or um, by calculating an exploratory or confirmatory factor analysis to determine how well similar items relate to each other. The fourth validity evidence is evidence based on relation to other variables. So it demonstrates that a score measuring a defined contract lead to other score measuring that same cons construct um, or or convergent and does not relate to other score measuring different construct so it is called divergent so the instructor can gather several different types of data about student ability or knowledge of a particular construct in order to gen generate validity evidence based on relation to other variables the fifth and last 
validity evidence is evidence based on consequences of testing. So it describes the ex extent to which consequences of the score are congruent with the um, proposed uses of the assessment. So instructor can gather evidence based on consequences of testing by ensuring that score under assessment relate to intended future outcomes. Principle 2. Assessment should be reliable and consistent. There is a need for assessment to be reliable and this requires clear and consistent processes for the setting, marking, grading, and moderation of assignments. When we say reliability of an assessment, it is the extent to which it consistently and accurately measures learning. It is just like testing the consistency of the results. Moreover, when the assessment is reliable and consistent, you may be um, confident that repeated or similar tests will produce consistent results when the results of one assessment is accurate. This allows us to make more generalized claims about our students' level of achievement, which is particularly useful when using evaluation results to inform teaching and learning decisions. Principle number three states that information about assessment should be explicit, accessible, and transparent. As we all know, assessment is a goal-oriented process. It is focused on achieving a certain goal or accomplishing a certain task. It also involves comparison between educational performances and educational processes and expectations, which are aligned to the course design and course program. In order to get the foundation of a useful and focused assessment, we should first assure that the information about the assessment, including the methods, its procedures, criteria, and purposes, are clear, accurate, and consistent. Second, this clear and accurate information about assessment should be communicated or should be accessible to the staff, to students, and external assessors and examiners. There should be a dialogue between the staff and students about the expectations and standards to achieve a shared understanding about the assessment processes and practices. The fourth principle of assessment is that it should be inclusive and equitable. Inclusivity promotes equity. If we try to link the words inclusive and equitable to assessment, it is closely related to fairness or fair assessment. Knowing that students have different attitudes, behaviors, and intelligences, or way of absorbing and showing their learnings. In line with this, the task should be catered for students' diverse skills. Teachers should design different assessment, which requires different skills throughout the course instead of just focusing and asserting skills that few students can perform and possess. Every task or assessment must help students to show their achievements or learnings using their own strengths and skills. However, upon addressing students' differences, academic standards should not be compromised. Assessment should consist of the competencies you taught them and directly targeted in knowing if the students meet or achieve the learning outcomes needed in the course or module. Principles of Assessment number 5 Assessment should be an integral part of program design and should be related directly to the program aims and learning outcomes. Assessment tasks should primarily reflect the nature of the discipline or subject but should also ensure that students have the opportunity to develop a range of generic skills and capabilities. It is indeed a priority whereas in every subject matter, a learning outcome must be attained at the, at the, at the end of the lesson. And in order to achieve it, we use assessment as a tool to know if the students really understand the lesson or not. And prior in conducting assessment, it should also relate on the expected learning outcome of the student. 
It is essential for assessment to be an integral part of program aims and learning outcomes so that we may be able to determine if we have achieved our desired goal or objective. And also, it can develop a range of generic skills and capabilities since assessment has various types and also the students will be able to develop and enhance the skills needed in the learning process. In order for our program design and learning outcomes to be more achievable, we should also set and relate our assessment prior to, to the set of objectives or goals that must be attained. The sixth principle of assessment states that the amount of assessed work should be manageable. As an educator, assessment is very important for it let us know if the student learns from us and if our teaching strategies is effective. For this reason, we must make sure to have enough assessment that will cover all the aspects of students' learning. This does not mean that you should have so much many assessments. The principle means is to have an enough assessment that will cover all the areas to be assessed and is still reliable. Moreover, we should make sure that having this kind of assessment would also be something that we as an educator can still manage. As a teacher, we also have a lot of loads except for teaching. In order to achieve this, we must learn how to properly schedule when to conduct our assessment. Assessment isn't just done anytime or anywhere an educator wants it to be. An assessment should be done in different time based on their type. Of all this, we must make sure that the result of all this assessment must be able to reflect students' achievement. The seventh principle. It is stated that formative and summative assessment should be included in each program. Formative and summative assessment should be incorporated into program to ensure that the purposes of assessment are adequately addressed. Many programs may also wish to include diagnostic assessment. What is the difference between formative and summative assessment? First, formative assessment refers to the tools that identify misconceptions difficulties, and learning gaps along the way and assess how to close those gaps. While summative assessment, it evaluates student learning, knowledge, proficiency, or success at the conclusion of an instructional period like a unit, course, or program. These two assessments are important to include to the program because it allows both to the instructor and students to monitor progress towards achieving learning objectives and can be approached in a diversity of ways. For the eighth principle, timely feedback that promotes learning and facilitates movement should be an integral part of the assessment process. Students are entitled to feedback on submitted formative assessment tasks and on summative tasks were appropriate. The nature, extent, and timing of feedback for each assessment task should be made clear to students in advance. So talking about timeliness, students, not only teachers, must come up with a feedback to their work as a response in a timely manner and not being applied late that they won't be able to recognize the answers they have delivered. So it is important that students must be engaged in the field of feedback so that they would recognize something that they must enhance when learning something or when submitting their project or assessment. This also enables them to use feedback in order to analyze errors and attempt to improve their performance. One example that supports the interaction with feedback is creating an opportunity for students to make a response during lecture. So as we know, just like lecture, we always encounter some feedback from students. So as for the assessment, feedback must always be applied. So this connects to their way in submitting their work. We must create a passage that enables students to know how they are able to come up with their answers, to be able to know if they must improve it or they did well. But it doesn't mean that feedback must only be applied if the students commit mistakes. Always remember instead that feedback must always be applied in every progress of the student's take. 
Denied principle of performance assessment, staff development policy and strategy should include assessment. Staff development refers to all the policies, practices, and procedures used to improve the knowledge, skills, and competencies of the staff to improve the effectiveness and efficacy both the individual and the university. This policy applies to all staff. Staff development embraces all forms of development activity, including personal study, e-learning, external and internal courses, workshops, work shadowing, and planned experiences. These aim to provide an outstanding and distinctive intellectual, social, and physical environment in which research, scholarship, and learning may flourish to all students and staff reach their potential.